In this video, we're going to take a look at the energy involved with a horizontal mass spring oscillator. So I already have drawn on the screen just a spring with a mass attached to it, and we're going to label a few different points. We're going to take a look at our equilibrium position. We're going to take a look at point to the right of equilibrium. Then we're going to take a look at our maximum stretch position, and then a couple of points to the left. So what we're going to do is we are going to say that our equilibrium position is right here in the middle. The very left point, this is going to have negative A. A is the amplitude. The very right-hand position is going to have a positive A, where we have the positive amplitude over there. And the amplitude is just the greatest displacement that the spring is going to have from its equilibrium position. So basically the distance from equilibrium to this point is just a positive A and then the distance from equilibrium to the very left hand, the maximum position, would also be A, but it'd be negative because it, we're going to say that it's to the left with, with our relative point of view. So in this example, we're just going to take a look at the energies that are involved. And if you think about what's happening with the spring when it's oscillating back and forth, the energies that we have are kinetic energy and spring potential energy. We don't have any gravitational potential energy because this is a horizontal oscillator. So we, we don't have any change in height. We're not going to have any change in, in our gravitational potential energy. So at every single one of these points, if I just label, I'm going to start with just with the three main points. Label our kinetic energy, our spring potential, that should be US, and then our total energy. Same thing at equilibrium, KE, kinetic energy, US, and then E. And the very right, KE, US, and then E. And then we need to dis discuss what's happening at these different points. Well, if we start at the point at the very left, we know that at the very left point that this mass reaches, the mass is going to stop moving before it oscillates back towards the equilibrium position. So we know at this point that we have zero joules of kinetic energy. We know that we have spring potential because the spring is compressed and it's compressed one half kx squared. Well, because we know the amplitude there is negative a, it's one half times k times negative a squared. Negative a squared is just a positive a squared. So we're going to have our spring our spring potential energy of one half kA squared at that point, which means our total energy at that point is just going to be only that spring potential energy, so one half kA squared. At equilibrium, we have no spring potential energy because the spring is unstretched at that spot, so we just have kinetic energy. So we have one half mv squared, so our total energy is going to be one half mv squared at that equilibrium position. And then at the very end point, again, the mass is not moving anymore because it's come to rest. We do have our spring potential energy, which is 1 half kx squared. In this case, it's 1 half times k times positive a squared, so that's just a squared. So again, we have a total energy of 1 half k times a squared. So what you'll see here is that at the two end points, the farthest displacements of the mass and the spring that we have, the total energy is equal to one half times k times that amplitude, times that displacement of that mass squared. So we get the total energy from there. We also know that equilibrium position, we have the total energy is one half mv squared. So if we knew what the maximum displacement were of our mass, and if we knew what the spring constant were, we could figure out what our total energy is going to be at those endpoints, and then use that to figure out the velocity of the mass of the equilibrium position. So that's pretty straightforward. The middle points that we have here, the two that I kind of skipped, if we look at these two points here, the mass is moving at that point, so we have 1 half mv squared. We do have 1 half kx squared. We do have spring potential. So the combination of the total energies is going to be these two added up. So 1 half mv squared plus 1 half kx squared. Same thing with this with this spot over here. It's the same really for both of those. So in between the endpoints that we have, the maximum displacement points and the equilibrium, the energy is a little bit more difficult to find because we have to look not only at kinetic energy but also 
the spring potential energy, and so the total energy is the combination. But if we knew some different facts about those positions, we could figure out everything from the fact that we have the total energy at the endpoint, the endpoints and the equilibrium position. So we could solve anything we needed to find at those middle points.